What's up everyone and welcome back to the comms channel. This video is part 4 of the series where I show you how to build your own WizBlock solar box for Meshtastic. In this video we'll go over doing a range test between the stationary device we just built and a mobile setup. But we'll be doing this in a better and more automated way than what I see most people do. So hang around and we'll get into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. Before we get into it, I quickly want to mention the community post from earlier this week where I talk about the storm that came through and knocked the solar panel off the enclosure on this new box I put together. I think the liquid nails adhesive I use should be fine for most and we had another bad storm roll through today and the original one I made is still just fine. But I just wanted to quickly mention this in case you did not see the community posts. If not, be sure to check it out and also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already done so so you don't miss these community posts in future videos. Before this storm rolled through though, I was able to do a range test so let's go ahead and get into that now. To do a range test, you'll of course need another device that you'll be using mobile. Most people seem to do their range test by having a device at home and sending a message with their current location and seeing if the device at home picks it up. There is a better, more automated way to do this though, and that's what we'll go through here. For the stationary solar device we just built, I'll be using my spare phone here connected to it over Bluetooth, and I'll be leaving this at home. No settings need changing here, just need to connect it to your device. For the mobile device, I'll be using my main phone, and we'll also need a lower device that has a GPS on it. For this, I'll be using my T-Beam that I have Bluetooth to my main phone here. This device will need some settings changed on it though. If you open up the three dot menu on the top right and then select radio configuration, then select position, and here we'll need to change the position broadcast interval. The default is 900 seconds, so let's change that to 15 seconds for the purpose of this range test. Next we'll go down to GPS update interval and change that from the default of 120 seconds and change it to 15 seconds as well. Having these settings like this, we'll use more battery power, so I wouldn't use these settings for anything other than the purpose of doing a range test. Now that we have the settings set, let's hit the send button and push the changes to the device. Uh, the device will reboot after you do this, but once it connects back, you're all set. After the device is booted back up and you're connected back to it, go to the three dot menu again, then radio configuration, scroll down to range test. Then for the sender message interval, we want to set that to 15 seconds. Then we can go ahead and turn on the range test enabled switch and then go and hit send. The device will reboot and then it'll start the range test. Now if we look at our stationary mesh-tastic device, we should start to see these numbered sequence messages from our mobile device once it boots back up. Once we've confirmed this, we can go ahead and go out and begin the range test. After returning from the range test, we can go ahead and turn off the range test mode by going back into the three dot menu on the mobile device. Then we can hop on the other phone we have here connected to the stationary device. Open up the three dot menu there and you'll see this export range test.csv option. Go ahead and select that and that will let you save this file to wherever you want on the phone. In this case it'll be the downloads folder. Next we'll be uploading this CSV file to Google My Maps to view the range test. You can upload the file to My Maps directly from your phone, but I find it easier to work with from a computer. With the CSV file on a computer, we'll go to the Google My Maps page and then click on the Create a New Map button. You have a number of different base map options, so pick one that fits your needs. And the layer box on the top left, you'll see an untitled layer and an import option below that. This is where we can open or drag and drop the CSV file we uploaded to the computer. So we'll go and do that. And then next we'll need to select the columns in the CSV file that contain the latitude and longitude. This will either be the sender lat and sender long columns. So click the check mark for the sender lat and then select latitude in the yellow box that pops up. Then go and do the same for sender long and select longitude for that one. Then go ahead and click on the continue button. 
Now for the title markers, this can be whatever fits your needs. I just went with payload in my case. After clicking finish, the markers will be placed on the map from all of the GPS coordinates from that CSV file. Now I like to use the measuring tool to get measurements of the range. So I like to place my own custom marker in red for the stationary device's location to make it easier to find on the map. Then from here we can take measurements from the various markers to see what sort of distance we're getting. Now this part of town is pretty hilly so the max I got on this range test was about two and a half miles. Going to the other side of the town I've gotten about four and a half miles. And not too bad for a device with under a watt of power. And these results of course are heavily dependent on your terrain. So if you're at a higher elevation in the mountains then you can really cover a wide area. I've taken one of these on a hike to test and I've gotten about 23 miles, but I could probably get even more range than that. That'll do it for this range test, but before we close out the video, we had a great question from W5DMH that I wanted to bring up. He asks, if you have several cloudy days and the battery dies, does it restart when the battery is once again solar charged on the next sunny day? If not, this would be a big dilemma when you mount this in a difficult remote location. Now I've actually had one of these in the original small whiz block boxes with the little solar panel on them running until the battery completely depleted. And I found that these unfortunately don't seem to come back up and charge when the solar panel starts getting light again. Not only that, I thought it was completely fried because I brought it home and plugged it in, but it would not power back on. Plugged it into the computer and it would not show up either. And I found that the trick to bringing it back to life is you need to unplug the battery from the device before plugging it into power or computer. Then it'll start working normally. After that, you can go and plug the battery back in to, to charge it up. In my response, I said that you should get over a week of use with a single 18650 battery in this latest setup. That was just a guess based on experience, but I, want, I did want to test this out further. So before I put the device back up on the roof, I disconnected the solar panel from the charge controller. And that was last Saturday, and here it is a week later, and we're at 44%. So that means you should get just under two weeks of runtime on a single 18650 battery. Not bad at all, and that should get you enough to get by during a good number of cloudy days. That'll do it for this range test video, but I'd love to hear what sort of range y'all are getting. So if you have your own setup that you've done a range test on, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Hopefully you found this video informative and useful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you all and have a good one.